Okay guys, so today we're going to be going over the logic, the logic block. So it's going to be this check and X plugs right here and we're going to be dragging that right over there. So um, for example, this block, let me throw a scenario at you. So let's say your robot has an ultrasonic sensor and a touch sensor. If both, if both conditions are met, then you want the robot to go on. Well, yeah, you can use double switches, but... Yeah, you can do that with the AND, but what about a touch sensor or an ultrasonic sensor detection? Well, that's what this logic one here is for. So, let me try to build that program real quickly. So, we're going to get our touch sensor. We're going to drop that down here. We're also going to get our ultrasonic sensor. Drop that right here. And we're going to be looking for the yes and the no, because that's what we want to detect, right? And now, what this is going to do is it's going to output a yes or no value depending on what has been inputted so let me just go over what's gonna happen when I do this so let's put that here let's put that here close this save some room and I, I, I need to tell you this beforehand so if you look down here we realize that we have that Venn diagram and just just let you know these are grayed out because of the wiring just you guys know already right so we realize that it's going to be or. So what's going to happen here is if the touch sensor or the ultrasonic sensor are both or either one of these is yes, this result right here is going to be yes. So let's, how about this? Let's put this in a logic loop. And you guys all know what logic loops are, right? They have to meet a certain condition, a certain value of logic in order to be taken out of the loop. Okay, so if the touch sensor or the ultrasonic sensor is detected because it is OR, it's gonna emit the value of true and it's gonna get out this loop. Okay, that sounds all fine and dandy, but what about AND? And you realize that the Venn diagram now it's smack dab in the center. Whoa. I forgot about that. Not the entire thing. So and what's gonna happen is one and 4 has to be true so the test sensor and the ultrasonic sensor both have to be detecting at the same time in order to get out the loop uh, I forgot to mention this just now with the AND oh, or with the OR it can be both of these can be activated in order to make it true so you realize that the inside of the Venn diagram is also filled indicating that both can be satisfied in order to get out the loop the next type is this XOR block and you realize that by that time this little middle part is centered or this little center part is widened out and you have the orange on both sides. So okay, if 1 is not detected and 4 is not detected, this is going to be false. If 1 is detected, 4 is not, this is going to be true. If this is not detected but this is detected this is going to be this is going to be true so it looks like an or function right but if this is true this is true this is going to be false so basically what the xor is is that the values that are inputted has to be or it cannot be both it has to be one or the other and the last one i want to discuss here is the not and i'm going to be clipping this one out and what this not does is practically an inverter so let's say the ultrasonic sensor right now is detecting anything below one feet so anything below one feet is going to be true so let's say we are detecting something below one feet and we're going to transmit a value of true what this inverter does or does not going to do wow okay what this inverter is going to do or does not function on this block is it's going to reverse the value so if this is inputting a value of true it's going to output a value of false if this is inputting a value of false it's going to output a value of true so this reversing is it's opposing whatever value is being inserted and as we can see here remember the data hubs here's a here's b we see that a is whited out and b hold on a second let me just switch it Okay, B is now whited in because there is no value being inserted here. Uh, on the last note, when it comes to not, you can only insert it to A. B is not going to be available since the not function only applies to one value. So make sure you correspond it correctly when you're using the not function. And the result 
you can stick it to any block you want that might be requiring of it. You can get really creative with this. And that will be the logic block for today. Feel free to leave any comments, leave any feedback of any sort. Um, hey, you're awesome, or hey, you suck. Um, anything that you please. Just, just I just want to say thanks for watching this. Thanks for being with me, and this horrible handicam. But thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll be seeing you guys in a little bit.